हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू टेक डोज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी द काउंट नंबर ऑफ मैक्सिमम बिटवाइज और सबसेज प्रॉब्लम विच इज़ फ्रॉम लीड कोड नंबर टू जीरो फोर फोर सो वी विल बी लुकिंग द सोल्यूशन इंक्लूडिंग द रिकर्शन एंड डायनेमिक प्रोग्रामिंग सो लेट्स नाउ रीड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इन दिस प्रॉब्लम गिवेन एन एन टीचर आर ए नम्स फाइंड द मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल बिटवाइज और ऑफ अ सबसेट ऑफ नम्स एंड रिटर्न द नंबर ऑफ डिफरेंट नॉन एम टी सबसेट्स विद द मैक्सिमम बिटवाइज और एन आर ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ एन आर ए बी If A can be obtained from B by deleting some possibly zero elements of B, two subsets are considered different if the indices of the elements chosen are different. The bitwise OR of an array A is equals to A at zero or A at one and so on till uh, the last index. So uh, this is the entire problem statement. Let's look at the constraint before we look at some examples. So the constraint says that the array length will be no more than sixteen. and each of the elements will be uh, a positive number from 1 to 10 to the power of 5 now let's look at some examples for better understanding let's say that our given array is 3 1 2 5 now the goal here is to uh, solve two problems the first one is to finding the maximum or value of the given array and the second problem is once you have got the maximum or value then we need to return the number of subsets with this exact maximum or value that you found okay so in this case if we solve this problem the answer will be 6 now what is a subset a subset is not a subarray all the subarrays will be included in a subset but uh, the concept of subset is when you can uh, include an item or exclude an item when you have a choice of excluding the item or including an item so each of the items will have two choices and so if you have four items the total number of choices will be 2 to the power of 4 so this will be the total number of combinations that you can form so the number of subsets with n elements will always be 2 to the power of n while uh, if you consider the sub arrays then you cannot skip any random item in between a 3 comma 2 can become a subset but 3 comma 2 cannot become a sub array because we cannot skip a so the number of sub arrays are order of n square and the number of subsets will be 2 to the power of n okay now just to recap about the simple bitwise or operation 1 or 1 is 1 1 or 0 is 1 and 0 uh, or 1 is 1 0 or 0 is 0 so it does not matter how many zeros are there if you have seen a single one and if you are taking the bitwise or it will always end up with a 1 okay now if you take the bitwise or between 2 and 4 where 2 is 0 1 0 and 4 is 1 0 0 you will end up with uh, double 1 0 which is 6 let's look at the breakdown of the problem let's first find out how to find the maximum or value okay so let's say that uh, we are given a value 2 which is 010 now in three bit representation if i tell you that we need to generate the maximum or value then what will be the maximum or value that we can generate if you have the luxury of choosing the item of your choice you can fill these bits So in what way can you fill this bit so that you get the maximum or value what is the maximum or value you can get 111 ideally so what you can fill you can simply fill 111 right so that it does not matter what are the bits for 2 i will always end up getting 111 but if i tell you that uh, get the minimum number so that if you take the or then you get the max or value as triple one so you will put a zero here because if i put a zero here then zero odd with one will always be one and rest of the places where you had a zero we will be placing a one so that all the bits are set okay so this is a uh, filling greedily right so what we will do is greedily we will be trying to set as many bits as we can therefore if we try to uh, set as many bits as we can and all the numbers are positive then given an array if i ask you about find the max or value then it will always be greedily optimal to iterate for all the values and keep on uh, taking the or of each of the value so that if you have seen at least one set bit for any of the bit then i will be just setting that bit for the second position if you have seen at least a single one i will set this bit for the third bit if you have seen a single one i'll set this bit right so i can produce a triple one what if you were just taking the or between 3 1 2 you will not get triple one for that case right so that is why it is always optimal that we will find the or between all the items of the array so that i will always get the max or value that can be produced okay so the part 1 of the problem has been solved taking or of the entire array will uh, give us the maximum or value now the second part of the problem is finding 
all the subsets which will be giving us the maximum or value so in this case we just need to return the count we don't have to actually find the subset so we can go uh, with the first approach of trying out all possibilities so this is a recursive approach you can also go with the bit masking approach which is iterative but bit masking takes more time so i'll be just doing the recursive approach so let's take an example of 2 2 3 so we have three items from index 0 to 2 what will be the max or value step number one max or value is the entire or of all the elements of the array so 2 or 2 or 3 you will get it as double one which is equals to 3 now in the problem statement constraint they had mentioned that n will be less than equals to 16 so this means that even if you try out all possibilities to generate all possible subset where each of the item has two choices to not get included or to get included you will have 2 to the power n number of such options that means 2 to the power n number of such subset and if you calculate the 2 to the power n value for this 2 to the power of 16 even if this n value was 20 2 to the power 20 will be equal to 10 to the power of 6 approximately right and uh, you know that 10 to the power 8 is equals to 1 second so this will be solved in 100th of a second simply that means around 10 ms so definitely this solution is going to get accepted so you can just get this problem done even by recursion now how to do it by recursion what do we need to do actually we can parse either from left to right or from right to left and for each of the item we can try out two possibilities so i have already drawn a recursion tree diagram and i will be showing you how to actually solve this problem with recursion so i will be doing from left to right so i will be seeing the zeroth index item seeing this zeroth index item too i have two choices whether to not include that item or to include that item whichever option you choose you have to always maintain what is the current or value that you have seen till now so initially i will be starting with zero so let's say that i am not including this two where will i go i will go to this two so that is the next index okay so at this two again i have a choice of not including it or including it if i don't include it what will be my current or value here it will be equals to zero again if i don't include this the current or value here will be again equals to zero again at three i have two options if i don't include this three my current or value will be equals to uh, zero right what is the max or value it is equals to three we need to find out the count of all the subsets where the or value of the elements is equals to the max or value right so in this case the or value is equals to zero not equals to three definitely so when we backtrack then this will be returning zero as an answer because we could not find this as one of the possible subset now if you happen to include this three then your current or value was zero to zero you will or this three and the result will be equals to three now we are done iterating all the items and at the end we have ended up with a value three is this three equals to the max or value yes so what do we need to return we will return one so all the leaf nodes will either be returning 0 or 1. What are these leaf nodes in this recursion tree diagram? Those are the items when you actually exceed this index 2 and reach to out of bound case. Right? When you are done with all the elements parsing from left to right. So at this position, either you get the or value equals to 3 or you don't get it at all. You get some different value. So if you get it equals to 3, you return 1. Otherwise, you return 0 for all the internal nodes in the recursion tree diagram since we are trying to count all the possible subsets therefore i will be returning uh, how many subsets did i get by including the current item plus how many subsets did i get by not including that item right so how many did i get by not including it zero by including this three how many did i get one so the total i got was zero plus one which is equals to one now if you look at this two and if i include this two then the current or value here will be equals to 0 or 2 that will be 2 if i don't include this 3 i will be ending up at 2 so is this 2 equals to 3 no so this will return 0 if i try to include this 3 that means 2 or 3 will be equals to 3 is this 3 equals to 3 yes so this will be returning 1 what this 3 will return 0 plus 1 that is 1 now what this 2 will return if i do not include this two i can produce one subset where the or value will be equals to the max or value and if i include this two still i will get one such subset so total subsets i can produce through this two will be equals to one plus one that is two now if i happen to include the first two then my current or value here will be equals to zero or two that is two if i don't include this two here the current or value will be two and if i don't include this three my current or value will be two 
so what this will be returning it will be returning zero because this two is not equals to three if i happen to include this three i will end up with three which is two or three is three so three is equals to three so this will return one so this will return zero plus one that is one on the other hand if i had included this two the current or value will still be two two or two is two if i don't include this three i will end up with two this returns zero if i include this three i will end up with two or three that is three so this will return one so this three will be returning zero plus one that is one and this two will be returning one plus one that is equals to two so in the top end like uh, the first item will be returning if i don't include this item i will get two subsets if i include this item still i'm getting two subsets so it will return two plus two four so the answer in this case will be equals to four that means there are four possible subsets which will give us the same or value which will be equals to the max or that i can produce by taking the or of all the items of the array right so this is the answer and the time complexity of this approach is order of 2 to the power of n because we are trying out all the possibilities and space complexity is order of n because if you look at the recursion tree diagram then at every height we are making a choice for only exactly one item at the top level we are looking at the zeroth index item at the second level we are looking at the first index item then we are looking at the second index item and so on so the depth of the recursion tree diagram will be equal to the number of items in the array so the call stack memory will be order of n and that is why the space complexity is order of n right once we solve it by recursion can we solve it by using dynamic programming well all the recursion problems cannot be solved with dynamic programming there has to be two particular properties which is a repeating sub problem and optimal substructure for a recursion problem to be solved by dynamic programming so what do i mean by that what do i mean by the sub problem term even in this case the sub problem is whenever uh, you are given the entire array let's say here you had three items then i was asking you about how many subsets are present which is giving me the or value equals to max or value right so that was my entire problem but what if i ask you that let's say i am giving you just two items two comma three and the max or value is let's say three then how many subsets are present which will give you the max or value equals to three then what will you answer so this is a sub problem because here you are just given two items and the max or value is three so this is not the entire problem the entire problem was when you had the three items right not just the two items again if i can just ask you something else like let's say if i just had one item and if the max or value was three then how many subsets are present where the bitwise or of the subset must be equals to the max or value so there is only one subset here in the previous sub problem uh, we had uh, two two possible subset right when you have two comma three you can have a subset three or you can have a subset two comma three both will have the or value equals to three right so the two was the answer in that case and if you just include three then you will have just one answer which is three right so these are all the sub problems uh, i hope you have understood the concept of sub problem here right now the main thing in this case is what all variables are affecting your answer so the first thing which affects our answer is how many items are we seeing how many items do i have in the sub problem so the index will be the first variable which affects our result right if i say from index one you have all the items to the right hand side that means i have just two items so this variable is definitely affecting it the second variable which is affecting is the current or value because if you look at the recursion tree diagram when i had not included this two then the current or value was equals to zero still but on the right hand side if i include this two then the current or value will be equals to two now these two being two different values can affect our answer going forward okay so what if i just had two comma one and i was asking about can you form a max or value equals to three so if you had uh, included this three versus not including this three then you would have got two different options here so if you had not included this two your current or value will still be zero if you include this two your current or value will become equals to two now from here whether you include this one or you do not include it you cannot get a uh, value three because here you can have zero value here you'll have one value but on the other side if you do not include this one you get two but if you include this one then you get three so you see that position is not enough in this case uh, the two sub problems here the st the one starting at one and, and on the right hand side starting at one are two different sub problem even though the position for both of them is same 
but why they are two different sub problem because they are uh, having different current or value when they are getting started right so there are two variables which affect our result one is the index which will define how many elements do we have and the second thing is the current or value that means what is the value in hand with what value are we getting started okay so once we understand that these two variables affect our result and we know what are the sub problems then the next part left for us is to check if we have repeating sub problems so if you look at it carefully this sub problem here is having the current or value equals to not including 2 and including 2 will be equals to 2 and if you look at this uh, problem here this current or value is equals to including 2 and not including 2 that is 2 Okay, what is the position of these two three it is equals to index 2 that means I have all the items starting from index 2 till the end and what are the current or values that we are starting with we are starting with 2 for both of them so since both the variables which affect our answer have the exact same value that means they are the exact same sub problems right so that means we have repeating sub problem and this criteria has been fulfilled but this criteria is not enough this criteria is for optimality this is for your optimization okay but then optimization is not enough we have to arrive to a correct answer not just uh, solve something optimally and get the wrong answer okay so the correctness criteria is the optimal substructure what is the meaning of optimal substructure if you are given the solution for a smaller problem then can you use it directly to form the solution for a larger problem if i just take a simple example let's say i have the sum from 1 to l okay and i give you a sum from l plus 1 to let's say l plus 1 to r okay and if i ask you can you find the sum from 1 to r then can you take this result for, uh, for the sum of 1 to l as x and if i give you the result from l plus 1 sum sum till r as y can you take this two results and say that okay you know what i since i already know x is the sum from 1 to l and from l plus 1 to r the sum is y i will just add x plus y and give the result this means that an already calculated result for a smaller problem which is called a sub problem can be reused and still it will produce the exact correct answer it cannot be wrong if this property holds for your problem then it is said that optimal substructure property holds so if you look at this 2 2 3 so if i say that uh, let's say that the sub problem starting at 2 and having the current or value equals to 2 if you have the current or value equals to 2 and if the sub problem is starting at 2 that means from 2 till the end i will get exactly one count of the subset where the or value will be equals to the max or value equals to 3 what is that subset it is only 3 then if i arrive to again the exact same sub problem with the current or value 2 and at index 2 do i need to again resolve it no i can just reuse the already saved value in this diagram you can see that i can calculate for this 3 okay and it will have a count equals to 1 it will say that there is one subset with the or value equals to 3 where it is equals to the max or value definitely so i can save this count equals to one so when i arrive to the same sub problem via some other path via some other uh, combination of choices that we made then i can uh, look up whatever we had already solved and i can reuse it later so that i can just return the answer i don't have to calculate the entire subtree of this right so in this case the repeating sub problem and the optimal substructure both holds true because we can reuse the uh, smaller sub problem answers and that will always be correct so and that is the reason that we can apply dynamic programming here if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number so let's look at the second technique which is by using dynamic programming so i'll be taking the same example where we will be having two two three here the max or value will be take the or of all the values and that will be equals to 3 2 or 2 or 3 now i will be uh, taking 
a table uh, it is a memoization table you can call it as a dp table where i will be storing the answers which are calculated for all the sub problems initially all these cells which looks empty i will be filling it with minus 1 why with minus 1 because in the problem statement they have mentioned all the values will be positive right and if we are trying to count all the possible ways then the ways cannot go below zero it will always be greater than equals to zero either there is no way or there are more number of ways right in this table uh, what do i mean by this 0 1 2 and 0 1 2 3 i have taken the index values in the row and the current or value on the column side what can be the max value of the current or you know the max value of or cannot go beyond the max or because if you take the or for all the positive numbers then it will always plot a non-decreasing curve you can take a bunch of positive numbers 1 5 2 4 and you can check it whenever you take an or with a positive number it can either increase the value of the or or it will not increase it at all if you just check it for 2 2 3 if you start it at 2, if you take as OR with 2, it will still remain to be 2. When you take an OR with 3, it will increase and become 3, right? So 2, 2, 3. So I think this idea is clear that the OR value cannot decrease, right? And it can never go beyond the OR of all the values of the array. And that is why I know that the minimum current OR value can be 0 and the maximum value can be the max OR value, which is 3. This is how I have decided on what will be the possible OR values and the index value can be taken from the size of the array right now if i write let's say at 1 comma 2 if i write here 2 then what is the meaning of this the meaning here for this is if i have all the elements starting from index 1 till the end and when i started at this uh, sub problem then my current or value was equals to 2 that means the column number 2 if my current or value was 2 which means that I had included this zeroth item. So my current or value became two and I was starting at index one. So I have all the items from index one till the end. Then this two here means that there will be exactly two possible subsets, which will give me the or value equals to the max or value. This is the meaning of the sub problem or, or one cell in this entire table. So which cell will give you the result? If you think about it carefully, then you will know that uh, when you have all the items at your disposal and your current OR value was equals to zero, because when you get started, your current OR value will always be zero. And when you are at index zero, this is the entire problem set. So this zero comma zero cell here should give you the result. Now let's solve it by recursion and we will try to apply memoization on top of it. Now let's quickly reprocess it using the uh, recursion tree diagram and then I will be saving the result whenever it is not calculated. So if we do not include this two, my current or value will still remain to be zero and my position pointer i become one. If I don't include this again, my current or value, current or value is zero and my po position pointer i is equals to two. When I don't include this, my current or value is equals to zero and my position pointer is three okay so my position pointer uh, being out of bound therefore this will always return a value zero because zero is not equals to this three fine now when i include this three then what it should return when i include this three my current or value will become zero or three which is three and my position pointer is out of bound which is three so this three is equals to this three therefore it should return a value equals to one so for this sub problem by not including three i got zero count by including three i got one count so at this sub problem when my current or value is zero and i have a two index that means i am getting this sub problem starting at two and my current or value was zero then what will be the number of subsets where the or value will be equals to max or value so that is equals to one in this case zero plus one so at this point index number two and current or value uh, zero i will be saving a one because it was minus one initially so if i have not filled any value i will assume it is minus one and this will return a value one now at this point two if i include this two then my current or value will become two and my index will reach to index two right every point when i make a call i will have to check if it as uh, if if this sub problem is already calculated so uh, if you look at index 2 and the current or value 2 it has not been calculated it is empty that means it is minus 1 so i will have to calculate this at least first time so if you don't include this 3 then my current or value will be 2 and my index is equals to 3 
so this is out of bound 2 is not equals to 3 so this will return 0 from here if you include this 3 then my current or value will be 2 or 3 that means 3 and my i will be equals to 3 so this is out of bound and this 3 equals to 3 so i will be returning 1 when we were present at index 2 and our current or value was 2 then the count is coming as 1 right so the current or value 2 and at index 2 my count is 1 so i'll write 1 here and this will be returning 1 so at this sub problem when i had current or value 0 and index 1 that means if i am at index 1 and i have two items at my disposal to be solved and my current or value was equals to uh, 0 here then what will be the number of subsets where the or value equals to max or value that is equals to 1 plus 1 2 so at position 1 that means index 1 and current or value 0 i will be writing 2 here right so this is how it is getting filled up so this will be returning 2 now it got 2 when you did not include the first item now if you include the first item here the current or value will be equals to 2 the position is equals to 1 is it calculated current or value 2 and position 1 this is not calculated so i have to calculate it now from here the call will go after not including this 2 and then the current or value will remain to be 2 and the position pointer will reach to 2 so is it calculated look at this current or value 2 and the position being 2 so this has already been ca calculated it is a repeating sub problem so it will simply return 1 without doing anything so this is the magic of using dynamic programming saving the result previously right so it is returning 1 okay now if i happen to include this 2 then my current or value will be 2 or 2 that means equals to 2 and my position pointer will be equals to 2 so is it calculated you look at this current or value being 2 and the position 2 so this is returning an answer 1 so again we do not need to uh, reprocess this it will simply return 1 as an answer so this is also a repeating sub problem so now uh, we have got 1 plus 1 here at sub problem uh, which is current or value 2 and position 1 so here i will be saving 2 which is 1 plus 1 and this will be returning 2 so this uh, the top value that means index 0 when your position is 0 and your current or value is also 0 so this is getting 2 plus 2 so this is 4 and this will be returning 4 as an answer so you see 0 comma 0 is actually giving me the answer and the answer in this case is 4 the time complexity for this will be the total number of sub problem which is n times r here n is already less than equals to 16 which is already mentioned in the question which is a small number but the r value can be high uh, because you see that each of the element will be less than equals to 10 to the power of 5 so each of the value will range from 1 to 10 to the power of 5 so max value of r can go to 10 to the power of 5 and n can go to 16 and still if you multiply them it will be around approximately 10 to the power 6 something more than that but it will definitely be less than 10 to the power of 8 and definitely you can solve it uh, within one second again so for this problem uh, dp was actually not required you can solve it by simple recursion you can also try using the iterative bit masking approach i will leave the link for the bit masking in the description below and also in the i button you can just check it out after this video let us now look at the code implementation this is the simple code for the given problem we are given the nums array i will be finding the number of items and the max or value by just iterating through all the elements and finding or then i will be defining the memoization array where i will be uh, saving all the calculated sub problems and i will be solving uh, in the recursion and uh, uh, returning the final result from the root of the recursion tree diagram okay now in this case this is the out of bound case at line number four where if i go out of bound then i will just be checking if the current or till now is equals to max or if it is true then we have to return one otherwise we will return zero now if the sub problem is already calculated i will be returning the count which i had saved in the table this is the excluding case where the current item will not get included and i will just be going to the next item okay and if i include the current item then i will or the uh, current or with the current item so my or value may change and we will go to the next index and finally we will be returning the number of subsets from the exclude case and include case and before returning i have to save it in the sub problem result table okay so this is the entire dynamic programming and recursion approach i hope you were able to understand it if you still have any question then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you